Welcome back. Um, so in this part of the show, we're going to be looking at the Premier League clubs. Um, with all London Premier League clubs playing twice, we'll start with Arsenal. <laughs> um, two clean sheets, two one-nil wins. Positive? Very positive. Like I said, um, um, different performances. I think uh, a lot of people expected um, Arsenal to get turned over by West Brom and Jabin because um, you know, Berahino is playing very well. He's got a lot of pace. So um, they expected us to um, do what Arsenal normally do, go in front and uh, kind of hold on. But I thought when we went, when Arsenal went one nil down, they were quite comfortable and they could have, you know, scored another goal. But in terms of when that, Arsenal went one nil down, oh, sorry, no, sorry, when when we went one nil up, <laughs> yeah. sorry, when we went one nil up, I'm I'm sure the British public were expecting um, Arsenal to, um, you know, falter and uh, sort of give ground and maybe um, West Brom maybe get a late equaliser or, or get maybe a couple of goals and maybe win the game. But I felt Arsenal were very comfortable in. Um, during the game and I thought the standout performance for me was Santi Carvola because I think he's, he's had a lot of stick from Arsenal fans his standards have dropped from the last couple of years and I thought did, that was when he um, kind of put his hand up and obviously I'm not just talking about a cross for the goal but I'm talking about him demanding the ball But what about um, Alexis Sanchez as well this season nine goals Arsenal have scored 22 Premier League goals nine of them have been by Sanchez that's around 40% of Arsenal's goals this season have been from him. How, how important is he to Arsenal for that, for that top four well, push? I, I, think, I think you talk about um, Alexis Sanchez. Is that Alexis Sanchez is basically, he reminds me a lot of Carlos Tevez and uh, Luis Suarez. It's to the extent that they, they're very influential in the way they play their, their football. Like, they, they like to be involved in all aspects of the game. For instance, they, they will track back. Like I said, they'll get involved in midfield. They never stop running. And they're basically the sort of players who can create some kind of nothing. They're always thinking about how, 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 how they can um, get the better of their marker and get better at the fan. They're always thinking, can I create this chance for another player? Can I get past this player and score a goal? And, he's, and you, you're right, he's very influential for Arsenal. And he's, he's easily been Arsenal's best player. But I think in any team... Where you know where where you're scoring a lot of goals, the player the player the player concerned, you need a player to ha score about forty percent of, of your goals for a simple reason. If you're challenging for like the top four, trying to win a trophy, but then if 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 he gets injured, is do you think the likes of Welbeck and Giroud are they going to step up and score a bit well, more? Again, it seems that Welbeck needs six seven chances to score well, one you, goal. You, you, but you, but you, and you're hundred percent right about, it, but. Rob Welbeck gives us another, gives Arsenal another dimension to the extent that for the first time in maybe a year or so we were actually getting behind defence behind defences like normally when Arsenal played um, with Giroud the side defences tended to defend on their their halfway line so what was happening is that they were they they knew full well that they they can risk the offside because they know full well Giroud didn't have the place but now with Welbeck they get Alexis Sanchez running with him basically teams have got to defend against Arsenal and with the you know, Oxlade Chamberlain and Casola getting around the back of the fences it's we're actually making teams defend both not just at, at the Emirates but at home at, um, away from home as well so I've, and it was a good performance last night from Arsenal I think. Uh, it was I, I, I disagree I was at the game and I think it was a very laboured performance I think but, we're quite I think Arsenal were very tired from the, from the you know like playing three, would three you, games would you agree that Fraser Forster though was the man of the match um, in terms so, of he well, made some amazing saves the well, game pe people, been... people say for, uh, Forster made them some amazing saves they're regulation saves for a goalkeeper six foot seven they're regulation saves like if you look at the, you look at the first you know when Welbeck flicks it on you know he saved it with his wrong hand but you expect um, Forster to make that save and then the one in the end of um, Giroud when you know a great cross from um, Sanchez again Giroud's um, guide, basically guided the ball in the top corner again Forster should be saying that I think the standout save was the one from Welbeck where it was a good um, instrument play between Casano and Welbeck, Welbeck and um, Sanchez and Ramsey and then he, way he, put the, he basically was going for the far corner and he basically um, stuck out a hand and put it wide I think that was the world class save out of all of them but he was very solid but really and truly I thought it was quite a laboured labor performance by Arsenal so more importantly, they got they got well, the three two, points two clean sheets, against the team. Six that points, you know. You can't know, ask for anything more. Can't really. more. We're two points off fourth place. I, I've got no complaints, and we're actually, you know, Man United are there, but I think you know, mate, they could falter. <laughs> Good stuff. So we'll move on to QPR. 
Um, real mixed season for them. So well, they won, they lost, they, well, the they've <laughs> lost every away game this season. Well, that's what I was, that's what I was going to get to. I think it's, it's quite amazing is that they haven't, they, they haven't even taken a point. And so it's, it's going to be their home form it, as that will well, determine whether they stay well, in this league, well, surely. Base, and base, a great well, win against Leicester, it has to be said. Well, Another definitely. team that's struggling down there. And obviously we'll look ahead a bit later, but with Burnley coming up, at the weekend, those are the games that they need to win, well, and they did that against Leicester. Well, that's the thing. I think I think the situation with Queen's Park Rangers is that for, the, for Queen's Park Rangers to stay up, you're 100 right. They've got to win their win their um, games at home, and I think that's where they're going to get most of their points. I mean, to stay up in the Premiership, we're talking was it 30, 37, 38 points. Generally, they'll look for the 40, yeah, 40, 40 mark. 40, oh, your yeah, 40s, you know, it's, it's safety. But, you know, look, looking at QPR's form, it looks like they're going to have to get all those points at Loftus Road. Yeah, and, they, and, that, and sometimes that's going to be very difficult because they are going to play teams who look, you know, like they still got Arsenal to go up to come to Loftus Road. They still got Tottenham. They still got Man United to come over, come to Loftus Road, and yeah. they got Chelsea to come over. Realistically, these are games, four games. Keep you all got to win. That's twelve points that they've got to get because they've because at the moment they like so. How are they going to get forty points if they're going to lose every away, every every away game? That's where I think I worry about Queens Park Rangers. I really do worry about them. 